Hello, everyone. It's time to texture the piggy. So we're in Substance Painter, and I wanted to try out if if it's good for stylized texturing, which I think it is now because it has a lot more brushes. Like the brush engine is much better than it was the last time I tried, which was years ago. For the specific reason that is, um, so let's, yeah. Uh, obviously, I have it. I have it textured, so this one I'm not gonna be going through. Like uh, a recorded video, I'm just gonna go through with what I did because I wanted this to be a bit shorter and not like the hours that it took me to do it. So keep in mind, this took me like I don't know exactly how long, but maybe like three hours, probably easily, because there was a lot of back and forth and messing around. Um, yeah, so uh, we're in Painter. I have the maps baked. Uh, there's a few few settings in there I changed, but since there's so many options with how you can bake the maps, I'll just leave it up to you. I think I, I, I do like too much crazy stuff. Uh, it's just one object. Like s some of the like world space normals. Yeah, there's nothing here. Honestly, like I've, I've set these like ages ago and now I haven't played around with them. Uh, as long as it bakes nicely, uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. And it did. Uh, I am in base color view um, just so I can see exactly what I'm doing. And what I've had here is actually uh, like a stylized texture generator that I got off of uh, from a guy on ArtStation. If we go not here, but here. Uh, it, it's this one, so it's by Anton Rabarski. Uh, if you just search for this, uh, you'll find it. And basically what it does, it's, it, it utilizes the maps, you've the baked maps for like the curvature and ambient and everything, and you can adjust the color and intensity of all those things. So it's quite amazing for to get far ahead really fast. You can do all of these things within Painter as well but then you'd have to be creating you know a new layer uh, and uh, build up a mask of what you want do that one thing move on to another layer build up a mask well this this kind of has it all in in one thing uh, i'm not going to go too much about it like if if you if you get it there's like it comes with video tutorials uh, how to use it but basically it's just a fill layer and you drop it in as a as a generator and then you have all these options where you can tweak the base, the ambient, gradients, like everything, which is which is quite nice. If I want to change the bottom color, you know, changes the intensity, the lights, like it, it, it's it's really nice, like the ambient occlusion. So obviously, I have the maps baked, and it's picking those up, and it's giving me a, a fairly nice base to paint on. I'm also adding a light, which is a generator that is in uh, Substance Painter, uh, just to give it like that little bit of top-down. So this is more to just darken the bottom. Okay, so this is our base, and that's how I would start. Uh, just try and utilize the maps, the normal maps, to, to get the you know, all the nice gradients that we want. So I want a gradient from top to bottom. I want like a bit of ambient occlusion, like where light is not going to be hitting. Just see how it, how much we can get out of it. Then I'm adding a bit more top light. I'm still playing around with colors. I'm not sure exactly what I want at this point. And this is just that, this is like another fill layer that I only have it on color. And then the play is with the mask to keep things easily changeable at any point that's most of the time how i go about it i create i will create like a fill layer and then i will play with the mask so you can always then you know change around the mask the mask is always changeable and obviously your color or whatever else is on it is also you know easily changeable uh, so the, yeah this again just has a light and then a bit of a settings. Can't even see it too much. Like vertical angle. Yeah, so you see like it is using the normal maps of how 
to, to, to like fake a light hitting. So I, I placed it so it's kind of, you know, top bottom. By the way, the light here is an overlay. You can change on all, all of the things you add here. You can change to have a different blending mode. So after that, I've, I tried darkening the bottom, but this one I didn't end up using because in the end it was too much. So I'll keep this off. Then I'm bringing out a bit of edges. And this is as simple again as a fill layer with just the color and then the edges. Let's start from nothing. So uh, mask editor uh, comes with it. Uh, everything else, like besides the stylized uh, texture generator that I used in the beginning, everything else is within Substance Painter. So I'm just using the mask editor. Um, like, yeah, just playing around. Pre pre I'll pretty much just need the, the, the curvature right in here. So the curvature is high up. If I move it down, it disappears. And the curvature is high up. I have a, a grunge rust in here just so just to get like a bit more uh not an even kind of texture and even after that i will i will sharpen it uh or actually I, I think it could be that this came you know from the mask that in here uh, you know like it could be one of the dirt cavities oh, no not cavities of course here but like uh one one of those Anyway, then I'm going to use the blur slope, uh, and and this is a this is a very nice one for uh, stylized for stylizing it a little bit because I don't want like a texture texture like it has here like a noise sort of thing. I want it to be like something else, and this is that something else. This guy, uh, what what this does is it going to distort what's underneath, obviously, because it's on top. It's going to distort this thing according to, 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 to do I have oh I don't even have a custom noise so yeah it's just a blur slope so you could turn it down oh that's quality sorry intensity yeah more or less just that sort of effect later on I'll be adding like custom noises to get a bit of a more specific look but this one was enough to get like a base sort of layer then I see there's painting which is probably just me like trying to fix some areas up yeah I tried to like paint out those but then I left it uh, so let's just ignore that didn't do much I'm adding some overall grunge so I'm still trying to build up a base texture to paint on and I needed something to cover the whole mesh so I have my grunge, and this is quite literally created a black mask, dragged a grunge, grunge map 14. So, you know, if you want it, you go grunge 14. I just drag drag and drop it in here uh, as, a, as a mask. Uh, I did play around with some of the settings. I think, yeah, I increased the scale a little bit hardness. Like you, you, have, you have the usual thing, so you can see what works for you. But the big thing for this one is that I, I did the blur slope again. And the intensity you see is quite hard, but I, I also changed the intensity divider by a hundred. It just it was just like a little a little bit more to play with. So see, without it at all, it's not the kind of texture I want. So I wanted a bit more messed up. And what was it like twenty two? It creates like an overall nice texture to look, but it doesn't look too detailed. It doesn't look like realistic, which is perfect for me. And I added like an extra one just as a darkened thing. You see, this is like color dodge, and then this is multiply, and they're both at fairly low values. Same thing here. I have the grunge. Doesn't look like I did too much with the settings here. Oh, the grunge has changed. Like here, it looks like I dropped something else, right? But anyway, like. And anything can work here, you know, you just take the grunges, drag and drop and see see the, the thing that it does. Uh, changing it to triplanar projection might also be a thing that you want. Usually, uh, that's how I apply my grunges. Again, uh, another blur slope to mess it up. I don't know if 
YouTube's going to show through too much, but how the texture changes, I'll try to keep it in one spot. And then it's like, it almost disappears. But if I turn it off and on, it, there is like a little bit of that, like visual nonsense that's happening. So uh, a few more things I did is to add some cavity. Like here, I tried to really emphasize the like the folds and everything there. And in this one, I, I did paint. So there's, anyway, for, I, I started with just dragging a mask in. It was one of the cavity masks that I like showed before. If we do cavity, yeah, you know, you have these guys, so you can kind of drop in and see what works. So that's what I did. I think there's, a, yeah, there's usually a few. Uh, so I was just dragging in and seeing what would give me uh, a nice result. And after that, I did some, did some painting as well. Like the painting is so messy because I did another blur slope on it. Uh, again, similar settings, intensity to a hundred and then play around with that. And so, so you see like without it, like this doesn't make any sense. This is so sloppy, but I basically I had this on and then I was painting. And then we won't see. Let's see if I grab a brush. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm not even going to bother. Anyway, uh, you get the idea. You can paint with having the settings on, and then you know it appears kind of like this. Mm -hmm. Moving on, I added a bit more light. Uh, I wasn't sure how much I will need it. This is quite literally yeah, just the light uh, and a bit of sloping as well to add some interest because it, it might be like a, a little bit too strong. But again, yeah, I wasn't sure how much I'll need. This is, notice the the numbers here as well. Like cavity is only at 30 with normal and this is another color dodge at, at 40. So it's not, like it, it could be way more crazy right if I pull it up this is too much so yeah, around 40 okay so the next one is like color balance I wasn't sure I'm liking the whole green into yellow sort of gradient I like the gradient it, that there is a gradient I don't like the colors uh, but instead of going back to change all of these guys and try and mess something I would just play around again because at this point, I'm still kind of guessing and figuring things out. This was like a, a quick way to like add a color balance. And this like, you can quite literally do a color balance and you can just grab it and drop it in. And then what this is going to do is going to create a pass, path through layer, which is basically, well not basically, it effect, affects every layer underneath it, right? Uh, so that's a, that's a nice way uh, to do it. If, if if you want like a filter on top of your full layer, so that's what this is. It's a filter on on all of the layers. And here it's it's also just playing around. There's no like magic to it. I'll just move and see what it does. And I, th I think I got like a, a little bit of a nicer instead of this green into like this sickly yellow. It becomes a bit more blue into reds and then into yellows and the colors are much nicer. So yeah, that's, that's one nice, uh, base for me to work on from this. So up to this point, like there has been very, very little painting just on the cavities here, uh, and here, right. You know, the one layer I saw, I, I showed you with the sloppy painting, but from here on, uh, I can do some actual painting. So I'll turn these off first, just get them on one by one. And so at first I thought I'll be able to use a lot of this base as a final and just, just do a bit of texturing, like, you know, paint the texture to kind of give an indication that it's all been textured. Uh, it didn't work out in the end, but uh, let's see how it went. So first, yeah, see, like I did this and I was like, oh, maybe it's going to be like, you know, like a very stylized looking uh, kind of thing, but it just didn't like blend nicely, didn't look correct. The brush I used is just the default one. It's one of the Kyle brushes. It's this one. Yeah. Uh, so Kyle's paint box, gouache, 
dry out. It's it is such a nice brush. If I could select it, yeah. So easy. It's a very nice brush. Obviously, I, I painted this with a with a Wacom tablet, not a not a mouse that I'm doing it now with, but it's a very nice brush. So I was careful not to obviously go too crazy with the colors. So if I grab this, you know, it's kind of nice. It has this brush feely, so I don't need to go too crazy about. Um, for the painter to look, the brush is very painterly by itself. I only needed to be very careful with where I place it. And you'll see in this one, I was like very uh, minimal with my brush strokes. So just one, two, one, two. It's, it's, I, I tried to use as few brush strokes as, as I could to get the look. But again, like the brush strokes and the rest of the block in just didn't look right. And um, yeah, so I had to, I had to do some more, but this is literally just you know I created a, a new layer and then I created a paint. I right click and you know did the paint thing here. Uh, I don't know if this is a better way to do it because it did slow down at some point. So maybe it would be if like you're painting, maybe it's better to just have a layer and just paint on it without doing this stuff. I thought I thought I'm gonna bit cleaner right but uh i don't know i i, I can't say i will rec i would recommend that but also i don't know if it's doesn't start choking a little bit if you're just using layers after a lot of painting but anyway so i, ha I have the main like brush strokes added uh, let's move ahead i see like it's a bit choky so yeah um this one was just and more painting basically i focused on the on the head because i was still kind of figuring out what i want this to look like and the head as the focal point for for this asset was a good area to start with so i thought if i can, if i can get the head right if i can get the look right on the head like doing the rest is going to be fine so this is also still using the same brush just you know making it smaller and trying to get some sort of effect going i was thinking like usually these are made of clay, um, but I was kind of thinking maybe some stone, so you can see like a bit of chiseled kind of look. Or maybe even clay could look like that. So I was, I was like fairly careful with how, where I'm placing these and how I'm how I'm painting it, and I'm trying to make it look like you know there's a highlight here. So then I'll take a, a bit of a darker, you know, to add on top uh, and all that. Um, yeah, so just turn it off and on, off and on. So j j just a bunch more painting, trying to define the material, but nothing like nothing magical. Quite literally, just going in and you know painting it out. I I, I have a shortcut set for the for the material picker, just so I can grab a color. It does grab a full color like even if I change it now if I pick it it's going to pick the whole thing uh, but yeah like I don't know um, I haven't I didn't do like any other maps right because for me this is just hand painted so I wasn't too worried but there's probably a and maybe I need to look into is there's just a color picker and not a material because you know this is painting the the rest of the things which you may not necessarily want to paint or you're just not going to be changing them each time because that would be annoying with it just something to keep in mind uh let's get another layer on yeah so yeah this is just continuing this is just more painting because it started a bit choking after all this painting on the head like it it was slow to paint uh, so we created a new one and then it was okay again just more detailing on the different more different important areas i see like the brush makes it quite nicely and painterly let's do next so yeah i i separated it to painting the lights and then the darks and then it was a mess of everything but anyway <laughs> uh, yeah so this is also the same thing i'm just trying to emphasize 
uh, dark areas. Pretty much just a blocking as well. I want it to be pretty, like, not overdo it because, well, it can easily become too much in the dark areas. Uh, imagine if it's a diffuse, like an albedo map, you, you don't want it too much. I know it's it's different. This is not, not for that sort of thing, but I didn't want that too massive of a contrast. There's already like pretty dark places. So I didn't want to overdo it. Uh, so yeah, just my block in for the dark areas. And then it's not dark areas anymore. Then I'm doing that same sort of treatment around here in the big areas. It's also fairly sloppily just 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 painting it out. You know, there, there, there's not even much to show because it's, it's just this brush and I'm grabbing the colors and trying to make it look a bit nicer. And here I was trying to add like a bit more color variation. I really liked how it ended up here where I have them more yellows and then on the edges they're becoming uh, more red. So I was trying to, and then, you know, there's obviously all the under underlying color with this sort of red and then some gray and greens and in there somewhere. So I was trying to bring that that kind of red in here, which I think I think it, that's just just that a little, little bit of interest. Because yeah, with with color picker, if you don't have like obviously if you don't have the colors to pick from, you're going to get a very monochromatic look, and it sometimes doesn't even have to make too much sense, uh, but just adding yeah some color some not, not necessarily tone here like more uh, yeah like hue variation so if i would like grab this maybe i could you know just change the hue just very slightly and then do keep adding a bit more no we're on this guy so just adding a bit more and like could make even like crazier colors work if it's integrated well with the whole uh, rest of it. So at this point, I thought it's moving along quite well, but I don't like how messy it is. Like it looks very harsh and sharp. Like I can clearly see like these shapes, like this is one shape, that is a shape, that's a shape. This is a shape, and then this is kind of, these are kind of shapes, and everything is more of a shape in itself instead of being part of the whole thing. So I needed something to blend them together, and that's pretty much what I did when I turned this on. You see everything blends together, and this is another brush that I used going over. It's called something, something Kyle Wash. Yes, it was this one. No, no, it's not. It, it is the wash brush. Yeah. Literally a brush called wash. And it's sort of like a, yeah, soft, little, little bit of textury brush. And what I did is I was like picking the main color and I was kind of blending it out a little bit. So you can see the whole head highlights are becoming a bit more, I don't know, part of the whole head. There's more of a gradient now from th from the shapes into, you know, going outwards. And I did that over like most of the areas. Uh, notice like the chin and the cheeks and, the, and on the nose here, like it's not these harsh shapes anymore. It's becoming a bit more part of the whole. And I think this one was the one that brought it together a lot more. You know, like all these, like the, there's such sharp little shapes now and then it's kind of more part of the whole there's even space to add some niceness like on the edges of the ears so also going across the whole thing and blending it all together and bl blending it by using this like softer brush i'm not actually using any blenders here or anything um, it's quite literally just the brush 
the backside needed a, a bit of fixing, you know, because it was too much of a gradient here. So I'm also added, started adding a bit of orange in here. But overall, this is just to bring all the shapes together. And as a, as a final bit, I did another color correction, which granted is a, is a bigger <laughs> change as well. Uh, so yeah, I felt with with the with the this one, I, I kind of started like here. Oops, sorry. So here I had it some highlights, and I feel like with this one I, I lost it. So I was trying to bring those back out a little bit. Color correct does that, and that's again simple as you know grabbing the color correct dragging it on the top it's a path through affects everything underneath and i would just play around with these again just to see what i want because it was very much like kind of open in the air and then i, I didn't know where it's gonna go so bringing out the highlights keeping the shadows as, as they are and you can see it's it's a fairly big change but I'm also like I'm also toning down the colors a little bit because if if this moves on and this is part of a bigger scene, I'm not sure what exactly what I want, and I didn't want a super specific color for it. Like this is very specifically a certain color, right? And I felt like if I have something a little bit desaturated, so uh, you'll see saturation. Actually, it didn't go down too much. Luminosity went down in some areas. Um, but I'll have more uh, room to play in the final scene then and with the lighting and the shaders to affect it if it's uh, a bit more toned down. And again, if, if I need to, uh, you know, I can always come back. I can always come and adjust. So it's not a big issue. That's the nice part of it. Uh, but yeah, this is where, where it ended up. So it's fairly simple, build up a base color with, with the fill layers and masks, uh, use, your, use the cavities, use the ambient occlusion, use the curvature, use the gradients, use everything to build up uh, a nice a nice uh, base mesh, blur slope, amazing. And then, yeah, then, then you're free to paint on top of that and you do your final adjustments it's pretty much as that like so this painter is pretty amazing right now uh, with, with all the different brushes there's more to explore in here as well like especially the kyle stuff um i i like to sometimes just stick to a few because i found the ones that worked and i went over it just and i see that you know i can get a okay result so it's fine uh, but yeah, experiment, see if, uh, what, what you can find out in approaching a hand painted texture in Substance Painter. Let me know, uh, how it goes out for you. Thanks for watching and goodbye.